Hello everyone, welcome to Business School 101. Imagine you're shopping for your favorite brand of cereal, and you notice the price has increased by 20%. Do you immediately switch to a cheaper brand, or do you stick with your favorite despite the higher price? Your decision hinges on a concept economists call elasticity, a measure of how responsive consumers and producers are to changes in price. But what exactly is elasticity, and how is it calculated? Are there some real-world examples, and why is it such a crucial tool in understanding market dynamics? In this video, I will explore these questions with you. Section 1. What is elasticity? Let's start with the basics. Elasticity is a measure of how much the quantity demanded or supplied of a good changes in response to a change in price. It tells us how sensitive consumers and producers are to price changes. There are two major types of elasticity in economics. Type 1. Price Elasticity of Demand. Price elasticity of demand measures how much the quantity demanded changes in response to a price change. It indicates whether consumers significantly alter their buying behavior when prices rise or fall. For example, if a smartphone's price increases by 10% and demand drops by 20%, demand is elastic, showing consumers are sensitive to price changes. Conversely, if a 10% price increase for a life-saving drug results in only a 2% drop in demand, demand is inelastic, meaning consumers continue buying despite higher prices due to its essential nature. Several factors determine whether the demand for a product is elastic or inelastic. Number 1. Availability of substitutes. If there are close substitutes available, demand tends to be more elastic because consumers can easily switch to another product. For example, if the price of butter increases, many consumers might switch to margarine. This makes the demand for butter more elastic. Number 2. Necessity versus luxury. Necessities tend to have inelastic demand, while luxury goods tend to have more elastic demand. For example, insulin for diabetics is a necessity, so its demand is inelastic. In contrast, luxury items like designer handbags have more elastic demand because people can choose to forego these purchases if prices rise. Number 3. Time horizon. Demand is usually more elastic over the long run than the short run because consumers have more time to find alternatives. For example, if the price of gasoline rises, people might continue to buy it in the short term because they need to drive. But over time, they might buy more fuel-efficient cars or use public transportation, making demand more elastic in the long run. Type 2. Price elasticity of supply. Price elasticity of supply measures how much the quantity supplied changes in response to a price change. It reflects how easily producers can adjust output when prices fluctuate. For instance, if wheat prices rise by 15% and farmers boost production by 30%, supply is elastic, showing a quick response to price changes. However, if a 15% price increase for vintage wine leads to only a 5% rise in supply, the supply is inelastic, indicating production constraints that limit quick adjustments. Here are three main determinants of the price elasticity of supply. Number 1. Availability of inputs. The availability and flexibility of factors of production, such as labor, raw materials, and technology, significantly impact supply elasticity. If inputs are readily available and can be easily adjusted, the supply is more elastic. For example, if a factory can quickly hire more workers or access more raw materials when prices rise, it can increase output, leading to a higher elasticity of supply. Number 2. Time period. The time producers have to respond to price changes is a crucial factor. In the short term, supply is usually inelastic because it's harder for producers to change production levels quickly. However, in the long term, supply becomes more elastic as producers have more time to adjust production capacities, invest in new technologies, or enter or exit the market. Number 3. Flexibility of production process. If the production process can be easily adjusted to increase or decrease output, supply is more elastic. Industries with flexible manufacturing processes, where production can be ramped up or down without significant delays or costs, tend to have more elastic supply. For example, the production of digital products like software is highly elastic because increasing output involves minimal costs once the product is developed. Section 2. Calculation. The price elasticity of demand, PED, is calculated using the following formula, so if the absolute value of the result is greater than 1, demand is elastic, meaning it is sensitive to price changes. If the absolute value is less than 1, 
demand is inelastic, meaning it is not very sensitive to price changes. If it equals 1, demand is unitary elastic, meaning the percentage change in quantity demanded is equal to the percentage change in price. For example, suppose the price of a smartphone increases by 5%, and as a result, the quantity demanded decreases by 10%. The PED is as below. This negative sign indicates that as the price goes up, the quantity demanded goes down. Since the absolute value is greater than 1, we say that the demand for smartphones in this scenario is elastic. Just like with demand, the formula for calculating the price elasticity of supply, PES, is as below. If PES is greater than 1, supply is elastic. If it's less than 1, supply is inelastic. Section 3. Applications. Here are a few applications of elasticity in the real business world. Number 1. Pricing strategies. Businesses use price elasticity of demand to understand consumer sensitivity to price changes, allowing them to adjust prices strategically. If demand is inelastic, companies can raise prices to increase revenue without losing many customers. Conversely, if demand is elastic, lowering prices may significantly boost sales volume, enhancing overall revenue. For instance, a luxury car manufacturer might leverage elasticity data to decide on introducing a lower priced model, aiming to attract a broader customer base. Number 2. Product Line Decisions Elasticity aids in making product line decisions by revealing how consumers respond to different products. Companies might focus on products with elastic demand by using promotions and discounts to drive sales, while positioning inelastic products as premium options. For example, a food and beverage company might expand its organic product line if it identifies that demand for organic products is inelastic, thus capitalizing on higher margins. Number 3. Market Entry and Expansion Decisions Elasticity helps businesses identify opportunities for market entry or expansion by revealing consumer responsiveness to prices. In markets with elastic demand, companies might enter with competitive pricing or innovative products to meet consumer needs effectively. For example, a tech company entering a new international market might use elasticity analysis to set optimal prices, starting lower in elastic markets to build market share before increasing prices as brand loyalty grows. Section 4. Summary. To sum up, elasticity is a powerful concept that helps us understand how sensitive consumers and producers are to changes in price. It plays a crucial role in pricing strategies, taxation, and understanding market dynamics. By knowing whether demand or supply is elastic or inelastic, businesses, governments, and consumers can make more informed decisions that lead to better outcomes. Alright, that's all for today's topic. If you have any questions or thoughts about elasticity, feel free to leave a comment below. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.